Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer. I am very passionate about helping others to achieve an abundant life fueled by spiritual principles and emotional balance. In this podcast series, we delve into spiritual self-care. Yes, we will explore exercising our minds and bodies, but more importantly, we will discuss strengthening our inner being, embracing God's love, and being filled by the fullness of God. As you take this journey with us, we want to inspire possessing your authentic selves and happiness. Welcome back, ladies. If you were with us last week, we had an incredible interview with our conversation with Casey. She was sharing about her journey, about being healed and working through that process. And in the midst of that, being strong and courageous. Of course, I like to ask a lot of questions. So I force all of my guests to come back because I want to ask more. So Casey, thank you for coming back and joining us at Healing Peace. Can you please reintroduce yourself for those who are just listening to us for the first time? Absolutely. Hey, everyone. My name is Casey Alexis, and I simply like to introduce myself as a woman who sees herself from God's point of view, which is the highest place that anyone can see themselves, right? Being able to see yourself the way God sees you. Amen to that. And the last time I didn't ask this question, but I just kind of want to ask to get a little insight on what Casey enjoys doing. Can you share a little bit of a fun fact about yourself besides being an awesome mom, besides being a podcaster? Oh, fun fact. I love, 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 love movies. I am such a movie buff. I'm a movie girl. I enjoy going to the movies. I just love well-written scripts and developed characters. I'm all about movies. <laughs> I agree. It's the same for me. It's actually a distressor time. So yes. when COVID first hit, I was like, what am I going to do with myself? Because they had a lot of terrible movies out prior to because right. they didn't want to. And I was like, I was having movie withdrawal. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> For real, that I can attest to experiencing that as well. <laughs> Again, I love commonality. I love knowing that you're not alone in your experiences and feelings and thoughts. So, Casey, that alone has been a fun time with you, being able to bond and share those experiences with you. So I, I do appreciate you being on the show. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Same for me. All right. All right. Now, where we left off the last time, we were talking about the healing journey. We're talking about how God was speaking with you and through you during that process. And then as you were going through and being strong and courageous, taking on, okay, the new casing. And some of the things I'm curious, some of the things that God had identified with you in terms of healing, in terms of being more boisterous as Casey. Was there a, a part in that where you were afraid of what he was telling you? Did that ever happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if God is telling, listen, if anything that God tells you to do, it is always going to be outside of your comfort zone. That's how you know what is God's, because it can't be done in your own strength, right? Mm. <laughs> so. Mm. Mm. every time God is telling you to do something, it's going to be out of your comfort zone. So yes, absolutely. Me doing this right now, podcasting, me writing my books, all of that was God pushing me out of the background into the forefront. And I'm very, very, very comfortable in the background. I'm one of those people that you hardly hear me speak unless... <laughs> I'm in, 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 in pressed upon to say something. So to be doing this right now, this is all God, all God. Sure. And so how do you get to a place where you're like, I'm going to push past Casey's self and stay into the Holy Spirit strength self? Obedience. I've realized that there's blessing in obedience. 
Mm. There's peace in obedience. There's mm-hmm. freedom in obedience. Me not doing what God has called me to do is living a life of what I had in the past. I lived that doing what I wanted to do. I lived a life of rebellion for a very long time and I understood and seen what it got me. So mm. at this point in my life, I'm like, <laughs> what else am I going to do if not listen to God? That would be crazy to go and do the opposite. And I know what's awaiting for me there. So now it's just like, I'm going to obey what God tells me to do. I'm going to speak even when my voice shakes, uh, even when mm. I'm nervous, even when I'm sweating, I'm going to just do what God called me to do because I know that there is prosperity, freedom, peace, joy, all of that in obedience. And I wanted to highlight what you just said now, because sometimes we don't get to that place of pushing beyond fear because we're not aware of what is being given to us. And you just highlighted the positive aspect of pushing beyond it in terms of, I'm trying to remember the correct words that you said when you made the statement of, was it, maybe you could just repeat that last piece because I'm butchering it. (laughs) Just go ahead and repeat it because I'm butchering it. It be, it, and it sounded better when you did it anyways. But please, <laughs> repeat that last piece so people can hear again the benefit of pushing beyond that fear. Absolutely. Like there's peace, joy, prosperity in obedience. Uh, outside of obedience is rebellion, right? And so anything that's outside of God is going to bring you pain, heartache, tears. And, and any other negative thing that you can think of, but in obedience, there's freedom, there's life, there's joy, there's peace, there's love, there's prosperity, there's all that good, all those good mm. things that come from above live in obedience. Mm. Yeah. And, and for, I think I shared before, like we always do a tools and tips, and this is definitely making it to the tools and tips show because again, the peace, joy, prosperity, Those are all great understanding and attributes of pushing beyond that fear, living in that place of true surrender to God, living in that place of obedience to him. And these are the things that we get when we do it versus the pain that we're thinking about in the midst of that fear. And sometimes, yeah. And when, when we think about that pain in the midst of the fear, We lose sight of what's on the other side. Enjoy Being Stylish? Our community partner, Back to Jesus, is a faith-based apparel and accessories online store. When you purchase items with our logo, you are proclaiming God, who has control, the Spirit, who gives us strength, peace, and comfort, and Jesus, who is our refuge. Turn heads with our stylish products while praising Him. Shop at backtojesus.us to purchase items. I'm so ecstatic about what you said to the point I had you repeat it because you're giving us insight to what's on that other side to help us to get to that place. And don't get me wrong. I want to make sure I add this too so that your listeners know that even in obedience, there can be hardship, right? Yes. But the hardship build endurance. Mm. And so when God allows the hardship in your obedience is not to harm you because the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he has a plan for you, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, mm. plan to give you a hope in the future. So even as you're going through the hardship in your obedience, he's allowing it to build your endurance and mm. your faith, your strength, mm. And your courage, right? Like we're talking about being strong Mm -hmm. and courageous so that when things come at you and then when the enemy tries to throw those arrows at you, do you know how far you can run and what you can do because you've already been trained in your obedience to endure? Mm. So I just want to encourage you that even in your obedience, if you're going through something, Be strong and courageous in the Lord and continue to press on forward because that is building your faith and your endurance to continue to fight and press on forward for what he's called you to do. Mm, 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 mm. And you're actually, what you just stated actually kind of already leads into my next question. And, And that is, 
in that building endurance piece, in that that piece of learning more about who you are and, and learning about God in the process as well, I think within that strengthening place, what is something else that kind of help us to stay into that molding spot? And one of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit more in detail is even in all the things that you shared, and even now to this point, I sense a strong security in your identity with God. It's very clear. And so I would love to for us to kind of go into a little bit more detail to how in those building blocks that your identity was being strengthened at the same time as well. Go ahead. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you go ahead. (laughs) So that was one of the major things that came out of my journey of rediscovery. Because at that time of the struggle, I didn't know who I was, right? Mm. Mm. I in all actuality, the person that I was at the time was pieces of people that I picked up from mm. church, right? I was living mm. churchianity rather than Christianity. You, I was living um, based upon what the pastor said and what this person said and what that person said. And I did not have my own identity in Christ. Mm. And when I went through my healing journey, Right. Because when you're broken, you're you're broken in pieces. Right. Mm. You're not fully put together. And so when I went to my through my healing journey, I began God began to form me. Right. And Mm. fashion me into his likeness and in his image. And so my identity in Christ was being developed. And that's why I can be as bold and as strong in my approach and my comments and who I am because of the healing process, learning who I am through Christ, being able to see myself from his point of view, the way he sees me. So no one can tell me who I am in Christ. No one can tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. No one can Mm -hmm. force their will upon me because I went through that healing journey. I know who I am. I know that he's called me to do what he's called me to do. I understand my lane, so you'll never find me in somebody else's lane. I understand my lane. I trust him because my identity has been fashioned and formed by him. So there's so many things that comes along when you know who you are in Christ. It's not just something that you just proclaim. It is in your fiber. It is in your being. Like, I love God so much because... I I now see myself the way he sees me and how he fashioned me and designed me to be like, there's no question about who I am in him anymore. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Like the enemy cannot tell me anything at this Mm. point in my life. I lived my life hearing what he had to say for a very Mm. long time and following his direction, right? The God, the lowercase G, the God of this world. But now that I know who I am in Christ, he can't tell me anything. Absolutely not. It is so clear in how you are expressing yourself that he cannot. Because you hear this level of just conviction. You hear this level of strength, a level of just security in who you are and in who God created you to be. We're definitely bombarded with all the other negative images. We're bombarded with, you know, being tossed by the waves. And here you are standing firm in your creation and standing firm in God's design for you. Amen. Amen. It did not come easy. It came with work, right? (laughs) Right. Right. It came with work. It came with spending time with God. It came with understanding his word, reading his word being disciplined in his word, following his commands and and the things that he desires for me to do, understand what he designed since the very beginning, which led me to studying Eve, understanding what he created in her and what that meant for me, right? Mm. Um, Because his word doesn't change. And so we study it. I know a lot of people don't really study study Eve because it's just the assumption is, okay, well, she 
you know, she's the one that messed everything up and then got <laughs> Adam, Adam to fall, right? Yeah. So a lot of people don't study Eve, but Eve's story is absolutely life changing because she's gone through what we all have gone through in some way, shape, or form. And she was the original. And if you study her story, you'll understand what God designed since the very beginning. And mm-hmm. then you'll understand what He really truly designed for you to be as a woman made by the hand of God. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and as you said that, uh, of course, my ears perked up. And if you could share maybe one or two aspects of Eve that we're probably not aware of that really identify how God sees us, I think our listeners will be really excited to hear that. Absolutely. So when God, one of the major things that I realized in regards to Eve is that God formed her and fashioned her with a purpose, right? Uh, mm. Her name is actually um, the mother of all things living. Mm. So God designed Eve for life to come through her on earth. Mm. And so when you think about that alone, what does that mm. say about me as a woman? Life mm. operates in me, right? So that means when I'm operating under my calling as a woman, I'm operating in life. God uses me in my breathing and my walk and my talk everywhere that I go to bring life in the atmosphere. And in your, if you're married, if you have children, if you are a teacher, whatever aspect of life that you're in, God literally uses you in the function of who you are as a woman, as a life bearer in everything that you do, in every capacity that you operate in. And so a lot of times you'll see that the enemy tries to bring death through us. He wants us to be the exact opposite. That's why the words that come out of our mouth as women is so powerful, right? The Bible says that our words speak life or death. And as women, we have to watch what we say. We have to watch what we do because we literally are a vessel of, that God utilizes to bring life into the atmosphere. And that's why the enemy tries to bring death through us. In our, mm. with our tongue, with our, the way that we operate, with the things that we say or do. And so when you understand who you are as a life bearer, you know that you make an impact in your marriage, in the life of your children, in your career, in everything that God called you to do. Just pay attention. Pay attention, ladies, to your surround. Pay attention to what, when you come into an atmosphere, what you can do. What, what, as a mother, as, as you know, think about your mom and how um, she could create anything out of nothing. When there was nothing in the house, your mom comes mm-hmm. in, she'll put this together. That's life right there. You know, yeah. um, bearing a child, you're bringing yeah. life into the world. The Lord, the Lord allows you the opportunity to do that. Speaking to your husband, you start encouraging your husband and speaking life to him. There's absolutely nothing that man will not be able to do based upon your words alone. And if you ask men on the flip side, what are some of the things that they need from their wives? They're going to tell you support. Mm -hmm. Words of encouragement, because that's literally what God gives us in in our power and our authority in in just what we do naturally. And as you were sharing that, my inside started going. (laughs) (laughs) That is... I, I encourage women to study Eve. Please study Eve. Yeah, don't, because, don't take my word for it. <laughs> no, no, but 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 you brought about a quality of Eve that we don't listen to or or have messages about. We yeah. have the message that she was trying to be like God and have all this wisdom, and then she ate the apple, and then there's a fall of man. Dang Eve! Or you That's, know, I'm trying to control my husband. Dang Eve! You know, <laughs> that's exactly what the enemy wants us to focus on. But the reason why he went after Eve, this is the second one. I want you ladies to go and study it for yourselves. Just don't take my word for it. The reason why he went after Eve in the first place, because she he knew her part in the in the in the garden. So, you know, that mm-hmm. a machine operates when you plug it in. Right. That mm-hmm. machine comes to life. When you plug in the machine, what is the first thing I'm going to do in order to disconnect that life from the machine? I'm going to unplug it. So mm-hmm. the enemy has 
studied them. He knew them, right? He knew their their parts it, that they played within the garden. So he knew that if I went after Eve first and I unplug her, the life mm. source that God uses in the garden, she's going to be the easiest person to go and give Adam the fruit so that he can be unplugged. Because if mm. she's the life bearer in the garden, I just have to unplug the life source and then I can go after the main one that will change the environment. And once Adam ch- ate, the environment changed. And mm. so that was why it was so, it wasn't as if she was the easiest in order to do the, the work. She was the best option. And he knew that. Mm. And it just, I just want you ladies to understand it's not about us being weak per se. I mean, we're not as strong as men. But he understands that in order to get to the husband, the house, the this, the that, I just have to go after the life stories and then mm-hmm. that's it. Just unplug the person that brings the the life source in the house and then you got the whole environment. <laughs> right. We got so, all this yeah. chaos. You got all the chaos. And that is so powerful and profound. And, and I know that these are the things that you share about in your podcast and in your book as well, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Being Eve, right? It's called, yeah, Being Eve in Adam's World. And so ladies, I, from what she shared, if it doesn't provide motivation for you to go read, pick that up and listen to her podcast, I think one of the things that's so clear in your journey with God and the insight that he's given you is the capability and the ability to draw women back to him with that God-given truth, with that life. And I know as I've been spending time with you today, my spirit has been so edified and just you left me kind of speechless sometimes with your understanding and your in tuneness with God. And so I would say that you have been the epitome of being strong and courageous just from the mere fact of your humility and your surrender to listening to his voice and then giving it back to others so they can be rooted in him as well. By the grace of God, amen and amen. I thank God for that. <laughs> That's yeah. only by his grace and his mercy. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know I, I've just touched a little bit if you can go ahead and walk us through to where you are now and the things that you are doing because of being obedient to God, let our users or listeners rather know what God has purpose in you and how you're moving along that path in him. Wow. So it's, what I'm doing now is truly just in the season that I'm in right now is operating number one continuously operating in the spirit of obedience, listening to the voice of God and really continuing my journey with him, right? Because I never want to get comfortable and Mm -hmm. content Mm -hmm. with anything. (laughs) And so I'm literally continuously searching after and seeking after deliverance in all areas of my life. I, I, Mm -hmm. I have truly taken that scripture where Christ said deliverance is the children's bread. And Mm. I'm eating that every single day. I want to be completely free and walk in the freedom that in complete freedom in Christ and everything that I do. So the journey continues. And as I continue on that journey, I just want to encourage women along the way to go on the journey with me, to go on the journey of rediscovery, really, really, truly understanding who God created you to be. Because right now, although women are being uplifted up on the world stage, right, Mm -hmm. we have to be concerned at which type of women is being lifted up. Right Mm -hmm. now, um, Mm -hmm. we have to pay attention to that because there is a distinct difference to what the woman that the world is putting at the forefront and the woman that God wants at the forefront. And so I like to compare it to Vashti and Esther, right? We're in a season where people like to say the age of women, but the world is putting up the Vashti where mm. God wants the Esthers. Mm. And so I encourage you ladies to go on the journey of rediscovery, truly understand who you are, get through the healing process so that you can begin to see yourself the way God sees you. And that's the journey that I'm in right now, just doing what God is calling me to do, 
calling out to women all over the world um, through the podcast with the book and just saying, let's go, ladies, let's go. We got to do this for our children. We got to do this for our families, our marriages. Let's go on this journey. Let's get connected the way God wants us to be connected. Let's get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can continue to do what God has called us to do. Amen to that. And I feel like you've done a great job not knowing of wrapping us up for today because it's like, I can't add to that. (laughs) I cannot at all. But I, I will ask, how can our audience learn more about you, find you? If you can share that with us as well, that would be great. Absolutely. So everything um, that I do lives in one place, and that's beingeve.info. So B-E-I-N-G-E-V-E dot I-N-F-O. And so everything between the book, um, my social media handles, Everything that I do, it can be found there. The podcast episodes can be found there. The podcast lives on all various platforms. iTunes, I think they call it. <laughs> Spotify, Apple Podcasts, sorry. Spotify, um, Google Podcasts, Anchor, you name it, we're there. Well, I do appreciate that. And I definitely appreciate everything that you shared today. Because again, as I stated before, it it really has edified my spirit just to hear the level of conviction and to see the fruit of your life. And even though you had your valleys and your lows, just see where God has brought you and now to an overflow that you're able to connect and, and share so powerfully to his blessings, to his creation of who we are. And I would say it again, the way that you've understood Eve is a way that I haven't been exposed to in all my long life. And so for those who are listening, definitely go find Casey, tune into her, because I I definitely understand and see the value that she's putting forth by helping us know our creation, know our identity, and being secure in that place. And of course, the overflow of that is that we're able to be strong and courageous. Amen. So I thank you for being on the show. I don't know if you have any other lasting thoughts that you want to share with us. I will definitely receive whatever you give me. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Tamir, for having me. It's been an honor and a privilege just to be a part of what you're doing and this amazing platform. And ladies, just continue on the journey of getting to know who you are in Christ. I promise you, I promise you the healing journey, it may be difficult to look at. It may be tough. There are going to be tears, right? As you learn and grow. But I promise you, it is so much more beautiful on this side, being able to see how truly God fashioned you and designed you to be. It's an amazing journey. And I encourage you to go on it. Amen to that. And you know how we do our tools and tips show. (laughs) She shared so much. So of course, I'm not going to get everything in 10 tips, but I'm definitely going to give you some practicals that you can put in your everyday walk that will continue to help you on your journey and inspire you to stay and be empowered by it. Again, Casey, thank you for joining us today. And we will see you next week.